Yes. I'm turn this down a bit more. Oh, I keep forgetting that it's fucking Tuesday for some reason. Uh, 13th August, 10.41 a.m. Supreme Court of Judicature and Defendants Antichamber 3. I am still somewhat confident about this case because there are there are evidence pieces that I remember still that have not been thrown out in Ouchie's fucking face. <gasps> I'm so sorry, Suzato. I should have told you about the toxin. Ray. You should have told the professor about the toxin also, Ray. Just saying. You have a strong sense of responsibility. I know that's why you decided to shoulder the burden alone. That's still... dumb. <laughs> no, that's not it at all. I... I was just... I was scared of my failure coming to light, that's all. So I hope to retrieve the substance from the English woman before anyone found out. <laughs> Mmm, Jezile Barrett stole the fucking poison? Shocker. Before the trial started, do you remember what you said, Suzato? That you had no doubt in your mind about my innocence, that you'd stand by by me to the end. I think that was the last one, I read it wrong. I remember. And yet, I... I didn't deserve your trust in me. I hid important details from me, Suzato. I completely betrayed your faith in me. Hit me, Suzato. I deserve it. No, in fact, throw me to the floor. No, that's too good. But for me as well. Drag me through the city streets. I'm no better, you know. Oh. Even though, in my heart, I knew that you'd pull, pull the knife blade from Miss Barrett's back, there was just a brief moment when, in my mind, I doubted you. Suzato, I'm sorry. After I stood here and promised you that I'd stand by you and always be by your side, on your side. I betrayed your faith in me, too. And as such, I failed you as a lawyer. Oh, no, no. I think this situation has taught both of you a valuable lesson. Placing your unbridled faith in another is no easy task. Yes, father. That fact has clearly struck home. Which is why I can see more clearly now. So, Ray. Yes? Can you find it in your heart to forgive me? Oh, right. I you know you'll always be a gallant, dashing lawyer in my eyes now. Oh, Ray. I think Ray's smitten. Or was smitten already. <laughs> I was so scared, you know, when it happened. I didn't know what was going on. The English woman was sitting at the back of the hut, listening to what I was saying. I know it was you who stole the poison. Well now, whatever do you mean? And then, a moment later, she suddenly got to her feet, before collapsing on the floor in front of me, knife in her back. It all happened right before my eyes. And you were the only people in the hut at the time? That's right, just Miss Barrett and myself. There was no one else. So I just don't understand how she possibly could have been stabbed like that. Hmm. A great mystery indeed. I still can't believe it happened. That's why I just couldn't bring myself to speak up. It will be all right. However, it happened, and whatever really went on, on by the sea that day, I promise you that I'm going to prove everything you've said is... Everything you've said you saw is true. Spoken like a true Mikotoba. 
Now I think we should discuss what's coming, coming up in the trial, don't you? We don't have much time. We must make sure we have our facts in order. Yes, I expect the poison is going to come under close scrutiny in upcoming proceedings. The police should hopefully have, have identified it on the blade by now. The trouble is, it's a completely new laboratory synthesized blend of al alkaloids. The police won't have any way of testing for it. Oh, I see. Isn't that why you're... The university is supposed to be helping with that shit? Yes, without this chemical... Regent? It's impossible to detect the task. So, okay. Chemical Regent? I sent a colleague of mine off with some earlier to deliver to police headquarters. Okay, thank you. I swear. If you were just holding that in the back pocket for later. I think perhaps you should have some as well, though, just in case. Oh, this is still gonna come into play, isn't it? Like, they're gonna say it wasn't on the knife, and but then I'm gonna find it on something else. Maybe. What's the matter, Suzato? You're suddenly very quiet. It's the newspaper article. Exclusive. Deadly poison stolen from Yume Medical Local Research Laboratory. I'm wondering how the information got out, given that it was a government secret. It was all the English woman's doing. What? It was when the professor and Suzuki were being interviewed at the laboratory. That so-called English lady swanned in and without a compunction said to Professor Mikotoba, Oh, Professor, surely your guests would love to hear about your work on that substance there. It put me in a very awkward position, to be frank. The suzeki sans curiosity had been piqued, so I had little choice but to give him a cursory introduction. So then, suzeki san knew about the poison. Yes, and it high, it's highly likely that the reporter who was writing up a story about us could have caught a glimpse of the toxin too. This... me... Mimi memo san by the way, did that reporter join you all, all when you went to the beach? Oh, no. I don't remember the reporter being there. Probably because he was fucking staking out in the bushes like a paparazzi. Indeed, he shouldn't have been. I very much doubt anyone would have wanted him there. Oh. I know a criminal had been given permission by the authorities to bathe by the seaside. So Zegensan pointed out that inviting a reporter might be problematic, so the man was sent back to his office. Yet he obviously didn't go back. He secretly followed the party to the beach and took this very candid photograph. And then presumably he posted it anonymously, an anonymously to the police. Not very anonymous when you have a very clear, distinctive crack in your fucking lens. Yes, that must be what happened. <sighs> Counsel, we just heard that the new witness is now ready to testify. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, the trial's about to resume. Please proceed to the courtroom at once. It's time to steal ourselves once again, then. Uh, uh, defense attorney Ryutaro Naruto. Gonna have to remember that part. Yes. Reyes put her faith in me now and told me everything. So I can't let her down. I have to prove, prove that what she's telling the court is true. I have to prove what really happened that day. I don't even know what happened that day. Who the fuck is still the killer? I know parts of it. I don't think Ray did it, but who did? Did she kill herself? It would be like her. At a, like, spite.
13th August, 11.30 a.m. Supreme Court of Judicature, Courtroom 1. Duh. I hereby call this court to order as we reconvene to continue the trial of Ray Amimal... I still don't have a good pronunciation of her last name. Or first name. Prosecutor Ouchie, have you summoned a new witness? Before I address that question, Your Excellency, fuck you, Ouchie! <laughs> I have some very important news to share. Fuck you. Oh? What news? And why does he look so happy about it? During the recess, with the collaboration of Professor Mikotoba's laboratory and Yumi University, they didn't find it on the knife. They didn't find it on the knife, I swear. The police re examined the knife that was used to end Miss Giselle Barrett's life. Excellent. I admire your rapid handling of the matter. Oh, too kind, Your Excellency, too kind. I was merely carrying out your instructions, of course. I had the region deliver her to the police headquarters by rickshaw, so it would be there in good time. But judging by the man's swagger, I fear we might need to brace ourselves for the inevitable. <sighs> and counsel, what were the results? This dagger, which was so cruelly used in the life of the victim, she, she kiss ass even in her death. <gasps> has no trace of poison anywhere along its blade. What? Are you sure about that? I would stake the reputation of the police on it. How about your own? Ouchie, huh? How about your own? Armed with the region, the test is extremely simple. They couldn't have made a mistake. Murder weapon has been entered in the court record. <laughs> in short, the accused people excuse earlier. Shut up. I have things to do. Label appears to be written in a foreign language that I don't know. It's German. So your knowledge of English is going to be a little help here, I'm afraid. Couldn't you have just written medicine on it in Japanese? Then we'd all be able to read it. German is the international language of medicine, my dear. But yes, I can certainly see the merit in labeling the bottle in Japanese. Though I'm not sure medicine would be entirely appropriate. Ah yes, this must be the victim's blood. Oh dear, blood is never a pretty sight, is it? But I'm having to fight the urge to run it, run it under a hot tap and clean it. You've always been so fastidious about cleanliness, haven't you? I think this is something else, Father. Nothing else out of place, it seems. At least nothing I can do about it. Fuck. Wait. Here's the hand's lid. I'm wondering, does this pretty much empty? Okay, it doesn't look like I can do any sort of experiment to use that this to try and determine if the pen was holding the poison or even double checking the blade itself. In short, the accused feeble excuse earlier has been utterly destroyed. Great. Now the prosecution is ready to call the new witness. Newspaper reporter who managed to capture a photograph of the crucial moment. Good. Very well, officer. Bring in the witness. No trace of poison on the knife. But if that's really the case... 
How can the toxin have entered the victim's body? Witness, please say your name and occupation for the court. Write an mini memo of the show you news. I'm what people like to call a journo. What's a journo, father? Do you know? It's a simple co contraction of journalists. I'm there where the. Ugh. I'm there where the news breaks, putting pen to paper to catch those scoops, so they're in print in the next morning. They don't call me the hero of Harold for nothing. The nice guys of news. Oh, so, um, it was you who took this photograph, wasn't it? Well, well, what have we here? I I'm sorry? Oh, brace yourselves, people. Meaning Mimbo senses a scoop in the offing. Female student up to foul play a defendant by curiously handsome young lawyer in Supreme Court. The readers will lap this up. We'll set it, it above the fold 7-2 in a five-leg format and for the morning edition. Huh? Right then. Let's start with your name. Oh, um, it's Ryutaro Naruhoto. Next, what made you want to become a lawyer? This is not a fucking interview! You're a witness! Um, well, um, I want to reform our country's legal system, I suppose. Ryutaro has suddenly become very ambitious, I see. I just borrowed Kazuma-san's dream for a while. By the way, my name is Ta Takesuchi Aoji. That's Takesuchi Aoji. And the so called Dark Horse of the Supreme Court, my objection strike fear into the every defense lawyer's heart. No, the readers won't buy that. What? Witness. Um, yes. What this court demands to know is whether or not you were responsible for taking this picture. You know, fucking answer the question. It was delivered anonymously to the Imperial Police Bureau only yesterday. Yeah, I wouldn't be a journal if I didn't click quick when presented with a scoop like that now, would I? Sometimes stories come out to me, sometimes I have to chase them down, but either way, you've got to be fast. Fast ladies to run with and fast hands to write with. It's no good if you don't note it down, Alan I always say. That's what I call... A mini... <laughs> mini memoism? Mini memoism? Ah oh, yes, I remember your face. We met that day when you were interviewing myself and sozeki son. Yes, right, that was me. Meany Memo again. But you were supposed to be going back to the so show you news offices after our meeting. But the scoop is, I didn't. Because the Englishwoman's words had me piqued my journalist interest. Miss Barrett's words? A criminal, left to do as she pleases just because she happens to be a British citizen. It's horse dung. This country's judi judiciary is run to the core. Dude, you're starting to make me like you. Don't do that, because I also think you're fucking nuts. The Supreme Court's rulings aren't worth the paper they're written on. Don't say that in court, dude. The police are just imperial pawns. Stay your tongue, young man. There are complex political issues at play. Hmm. Well, anyway, I quickly jotted down those words she said in my mini memo mini pa memo pad. Are you ready? I'll read it out. It's all right here. Here it goes. 
I should like to go with everyone to see your country's coast. A serious criminal going on some... Is there a thing to tell me what the fuck a junket is? These people need to know about this. The people. That's why I decided to sneak after them. To get the woman's story so I could hammer her in the press. Do you mean to say that you did indeed witness it firsthand? The grim scene portrayed in this photograph. Oh yes, I saw it with my very own journal eyes. From start to finish, through the viewfinder of my trusty camera. Thank you, Mimi Mamasan. You will now give formal testimony before the court. You will state exactly what it is that you witnessed in the events surrounding Miss Barrett's death. The camera never lies. The beach hut was made of a shoddy old reed screen, means there are plenty of gaps I could see in inside through. Okay, I believe that. The English woman was sitting on a stool when the little student girl came in and started arguing with her. Seconds later, the girl pulled down a knife, throwing the English woman to the floor as she stabbed her in the back. My smoldering journal spirit burst into flame. Quick as a flash, I whipped out my camera, ready to click. I pulled apart the rough weave of my screens and poked the lenses through for the perfect shot. Hmm. Read screens, you say? Right, you can see them clearly enough in that a great shot I snapped. The hut walls were just screens made of coarsely woven reeds. Yes, it allows for the breeze to pass through and bring some relief from the summer heat. And it was a breeze for me to poke my camera through and see the whole thing hopping up. Hotting up. Ignore for the time being the impelling invasion of privacy involved. Did you witness everything that happened from the moment the defendant entered the hut? Oh yes, I saw it. I saw the whole thing from start to finish. And you say that you took the photograph through the gap in one of the screens. Luckily for me, there were plenty of shoddily woven. I pulled the rings apart and thrust my lens of my camera through the gap. Would I, gave, would I get away with it or would I be seen? It was a gamble of a lifetime. A tenacity of purpose that considers admirably in a journalist, I suppose. Run a risk one day, run the scoop the next. That meaning memo was in a nutshell. At last. It would appear we have a genuine witness to this wicked crime. The evidence and testimony are extremely compelling. I believe we may be close to a verdict. No? Wonderful news, Your Excellency. Wonderful. I still can cross-examine here. Nevertheless, it cannot be denied that this testimony begs one very large question. Do you want to share it with me, Miko Tava? Because I'm a little lost on what the question is. Oh, right, the poison. What question? Exclusive news, a startling photograph, all the makings of an exceptional story for the reporter. Why, then, was the story never published? Okay, that's not the poison factor, but okay. This also, yeah, why... Why leak it to the police and not, you know, publish it on the front page? <laughs> oh, that's right. It seems clear to me that there are circumstances at play here that are yet to be understood. Huh, more pathetic excuses. Very well then, counsel. Proceed with your cross-examination. Yes, Your Excellency. There's more to this reporter than meets the eye. He's keeping something about this case very close to his chest. Hmm. Camera never was. Petro's made of shoddy old green, so there are plenty of gas I could see through. I 
Like, I believe that, because... Even looking at that photograph, you can see the gap. So that looks like it's going through a different gap. Hmm. You know, she was still when the senior girl came and started arguing with her. Then later the girl pulled out a knife, throwing the English one to the floor as she stepped in the back. I might press this part. Do you swear before the court that you actually saw the premise? moment when the stabbing took place. Ha! Huh, the precise moment. I didn't see just that. I saw the whole hella scene play out. From start to finish. I have here a simple plan of the beach hut. Perhaps you could use it to explain to the court exactly what you witnessed. Right, you are. So here are my any memo memo pad. When I first peered into the hut, I'm sure that the English woman was on the stool at the back of the hut here. Yes, the accused's own testimony confirmed that. She just sat at the back of the hut, smiling sweetly, is what I've noted down. It's my turn to testify now. Try not to interrupt. Huh? In the next moment, as I was watching, the evil student girl entered the hut. After a while, the pair of them ended up in the middle of the hut arguing furiously. The English woman went for the student, but the girl dodged out of the way. And in a flash, plumbed the knife into her adversary's back as the two passed each other. Hmm. When described as a grim scene indeed. Never sugarcoat the truth. That's what meaning memoism says. Each of plan has been entered into the court record. Well, that's actually potentially helpful. By the way, meaning memo son, whilst you were watching that terrible scene unfold before your eyes through the gap in the screen, did it not occur to you to try to prevent the tragedy rather than capture it on film? Journos have to be observers. We can't get involved. That's our rise and deter. So you didn't converse with Miss Barrett at all? Obviously not. An observer always remains on the outside looking in. And that's something to be proud of, is it? Your Excellency, if I may. Yes, Professor. I think the witness's last expertly phrased statement should perhaps be added to his formal testimony. Hmm? I will grant the defense's request. Meaning, Memo-san, you will supplement your formal testimony with the aforementioned statement. Well, nihilism is the foundation of meaning memoism. But I will grandly prove that my words aren't meaningless. I never once set foot in the hut nor spoke with the English woman. I was there only as an observer. Hold it. Let's press on this now. Really? You didn't set foot inside the hut at all. Are you quite sure about that? I think you may have the wrong impression of me. We're talking about a murder scene here. My nerves are stretched to the breaking point already. Oh, I see. You were scared. Maybe I did have the wrong impression of you, yes. It was all I could do to stifle a scream and hold my hand steady enough to snap the shot. You really should have summoned help before thinking of your camera. Meaning memoism and humanism don't always agree. And most of the time, in those instances, meaning memoism comes out on top. Huh. As a sculptor of stories, sometimes I have to be cruel for my art. Yes, that's the spot. That's spot on. Surely he's making all this up. 
He claims to have spied on the whole affair from start to finish. If true, his testimony is devastating. But it does seem as though he's holding something back, doesn't it? It's, if that's how you feel, I suggest you trust your instincts and press him on everything he said. As you've no doubt seen, done many times before in your role as a judicial assistant. Yes, I have. I've seen witnesses like this pressed often. I know exactly what to do. Well, I pressed on a couple things, but maybe there's more. Each child was made of shoddy old reed screens, so there's plenty of games I could see through and suck. I just don't think that's worth sitting on a stool when the student girl came and started arguing with her. Like, those two don't seem worth pressing on. That one, maybe. My smiling journal spare person flamed quickly as best. I wish I had my camera ready to click. Of one of the screens and poke the lens through for the perfect shot. Hold it. Maybe this one. The two on the side didn't notice? Ah, obviously not. If they had, where would I be right now? In jail, that's where. Which you'd think would make you reflect on what you were doing. No, a journal's job is to collect little snippets of life as unobtrusively as possible. Leave nothing but footprints. Take nothing but photos. Yes, that's spot on. Did he just make that up? The point is, the witness risks life and limb to attain this photograph. And this photograph reveals the whole truth. There is nothing more to be said. I never once set foot in the hut, nor spoke with the English woman when I was there as an observer. I'm gonna part the rough ways and the screen. Let's go through for the perfect shot. Hold it. I guess I will press on this part. The court is fully aware of your desire to capture the incident on film, I'm sure, but why then did you choose to post the photograph anonymously to the police? Afraid, I don't understand a word of what's coming out of your mouth. I'm asking why, as a journalist, you decided not to make a story out of the incident. Think of me as a sculptor, a sculptor who makes art out of assorted private details of people's li other people's lives. But never, but I never discuss my own personal life on principle. I mean, that's basic meaning memoism. It's not something to boast about. No doubt your burning desire to see the truth exposed and justice done was what motivated you. Dude didn't even stop the murder from happening. He does not have a sense of justice, Ouchie. That's it. That's brilliant. My burning desire to see something or other exposed. That's be a good reason why I didn't think to write an article about what he saw, though. By your own admission, you were outside the hut. How then did you manage to take the photograph? Ah, yes, that. I'm glad you asked. Pull apart the rough weeds and screen, poke my lens in for the perfect shot. Like, I feel like there's something in the weeds here. But, like, oh. his fucking full name? The RM initials are very clearly engraved here. Wait, wait, wait. Core record, core record. Uh, people. Right ten mini memo. Okay, I think, I think I have an idea. I think I know what to contradict. I think I know what to present. I am fucking got it. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme. 
This is your fucking pen, isn't it? Present? Oh, wait. That's the wrong bit. I need to present the pen. Mimi Mamasan, until now, I've had a firm belief that the newspapers are in the business of uncovering and publishing the truth. That's why there's that blue splotch on his hand, too. The ink might have leaked out of it. You're spot on there. The press doesn't lie, which is why I'm proud to wear the emblem of the show you news on my arm. In a way, that's more meaning in memoism. Sadly, though, it seems the journalists who write for those papers don't always share the same passion for the truth. What? What are you suggesting with this recriminatory words, Council? Meeting Memosan, do you recognize this fountain pen? Ah. Uh. The pen was found at the scene of Miss Barrett's death. In fact, the murder victim was gripping it in her hand as she died. What are you? If you look at the barrel of the pen, you'll notice that its owner's initials are engraved there. R.M. Yes, thank you for bringing that up, Council. The initials of the accused, Raymond Bombi. Is it a coincidence, I wonder, that your initials are also RM? No. Write in mini memo, RM. That's, that's horse dung. Can't you see one of the central tenets of mini memoisms is a pencil user? And yet, as the court will clearly be able to see on your right hand, there's a very obvious blue ink stain. It would appear that you must have a rather careless le uh, carelessly left it somewhere recently. Your favorite fountain pen, that is. Horsey horse dung. <laughs> Meaning, Memosan, it is not the case that before... Is it not the case that before she died, you met with Jezal Barrett in the at Beach Hut? Why should we listen to this absurd nonsense? It's nothing but another excuse. Exactly. Show you news will stand behind me all the way. I deny everything. There must be as many people with the initials RM as there are stars in the night sky. The defense has neither the time nor the inclination to count every star in the sky. Hmm? And there's no need anyway, because the pen has more to tell. Yes, there is another clue. A clue that undeniably proves who its owner really is. In that case, counsel, the defense will show the court where this alleged clue lies. Of course, Your Excellency. What would have happened had I not already fully examined this pen? There's some sort of emblem here, look, but it's in the universe, it belongs to some other organization, I suppose. Business of some kind, but that would seem to imply that the business... And this. As well as the initials, there's also an emblem on this fountain pen. An emblem that you'll, of course, recognize, Mini Mamasan. Oh, damn, it is the show you news symbol. Goodness me! It, it's the emblem of the show you news. In other words, the owner of this pen is an employee of the show you news whose initials are RM. Suddenly, the stars in the sky don't seem so numerous, do they? Well, Mini Memo san, how do you respond? No. Order, order, explain yourself, witness. <laughs> Full of shit. <laughs> Laughing. So this is how the mighty Supreme Court works, is it? Using coercive tactics to have well-meaning citizens reveal harmless secrets. 
I've used nothing but honest tactics. Alrighty then, fine. I won't try to hide it anymore. Yes, not long before the grim tragedy unfolded. I, a show you news reporter on behalf of the public, conducted an interview with the Englishwoman. An interview? You, you never mentioned this before? Well, exactly, when exactly was this? As I said, it was before that evil little student girl showed up owed her face in the hut. It couldn't have lasted more than two or three minutes, that's all. It was a brief exchange. But it came to nothing. And as we Mino Memoists say, the people don't pay their dues for unworthy news. However insignificant you deem it to be, the court cannot overlook the meeting between yourself and the victim. You will testify now under oath about the precise nature of this meeting and what transpired. Got it, yes, alright, but... On one condition. Condition? In all good conscience, I wouldn't speak out, out alone about this. You need to call back the earlier witness, Sozeki Natsume-san. Sozeki-san? Oh yes, according to my notes here, that man has a secret of his own, and brace yourself. Because it's not a harmless one, it's big. What? What? A meaning memoism states that one man's secret is another man's front page story. Are you using the court to get a scoop? I will grant the witness's request in this instance. Officer, summon the earlier witness back to the stand. So is Aki son hiding something? Did, is he not known to be a murderer? Or uh, accused murderer before? The witness's secrets. I asked the English woman for an interview, but she declined, so I left the hut without making a fuss. Then, watching secretly from outside, I saw the woman being stabbed and the other witnesses come running. The detective realized that the victim still had a pulse, so he ran off to fetch help. That's when, this writer man here asked the woman a very significant question. But he didn't say anything about that in his testimony, which is why Mini Memoism demands I reveal it now. You mean, you, you mean to say the victim, the victim regained consciousness? Ah, well, um, and when she did, you decided to ask her a question? That's, um, true, yes. He did, he did, and that's not all. The woman gave him a very definitive answer. An answer that incriminates the accused. This is preposterous. Why am I only hearing about this now? Maybe because you don't properly interview and vet your fucking evidence, Ouchie. You're a bad prosecutor. How about that? Why didn't you mention this before? You yokel hack. It, 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 it wasn't even a conversation. Yes, I did pose the writhing English rose Rose, a question. I don't deny it. But she could no longer speak. She was barely conscious, even. Counsel for the defense, I expect a thorough cross-examination to be conducted here. This court must and will know the truth. Absolutely, Your Excellency. Because obviously we can't get the prosecutor to do it out. She's an idiot. <laughs> The reporter is claiming the misprints it had implicated Ray somehow. What on earth could have happened in that hut? I asked the woman for the interview, but she declined, so I left the hut without making a fuss. And watching secretly from the outside, I saw a woman being stabbed and the other witness come running. 
Detective realized the victim still had a pulse, so he ran off to fetch help. That's when the writer man here asked the woman a very significant question. Well, I think this is where I'll press on. About asking the question. What question? What exactly did he say? Well now, you should hear that from the horse's mouth, I think. I can't press him! Don't you, Mr. Writer Man? Ugh. Out with it, you yokel hack. What did you say to her? What did you say to the dying English woman? Well, in truth, I've been c catching crabs at the water's edge and building castles in the sand, you see. Well, the seaside is a place to be at leisure, I suppose. Even for a grown man. But then, all of a sudden, from that little beach hut, a young girl's panic-stricken vo- cries for help. Help pierce the air. Ray? I ran up to the beach to see what was happening. Defendant leaning over the collapsed victim, as soon as the Inspector Hosanaga saw Miss Brett on the ground, he sprinted off to get help. And then, just a moment later, I heard a faint moan. A moan from the dead English woman. I nearly jumped out of my skin. But what did you ask her, Sozeki-san? I asked her, who did this to you? Don't protract this any longer. How did the woman respond? She didn't. She said nothing in response. But, but... When in the stand, you will answer questions asked of you unambiguously. Now, without evasion or retense, I demand that you amend your testimony. I will 